G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. What we're going to be having a look at in this video is just an introduction to tree diagrams and lists that are used when doing probability. So, it's going to be a nice, simple video. It's the second part of a series of videos looking at probability. And please, 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 don't forget, if you like this video, please hit the like button. Smash the like button. And don't forget to subscribe anyway. So, I'm going to start out straight away with this. So, I'm going to give you, do this through an example. So the example I'm going to use is this one. Okay, so a coin is tossed two times. Okay, so it's tossed once, we get the result, and it's tossed a second time. What we're going to be looking at with this is we're going to use a tree diagram here to illustrate the different possible results that we can get. And also we're going to use it to actually work out different probabilities of our outcomes. So first off, uh, now if you throw a coin, you've got two possible outcomes. You get a head or you can get a tail. And it's pretty important, first off, that you would identify the different outcomes that you could get when drawing up a tree diagram. You've got two different events that are occurring, so we're going to now deal with these. Uh, the first one, and then the second one. Now, this is why they're called tree diagrams. And that first event, what you could do is we branch off here. We could say in that first event, what you could do is you could get a head or a tail. Okay, pretty easy so far, right? For the second event, for the second tossing, you could have got a head first, and then you end up with, for the second toss, a head or a tail. Or, you could have got tails first, and you could end up with a head or a tail. So this is a tree diagram here, okay? Uh, nice and easy, pretty simple. Now look, they're a really, really good way of organising your thoughts when it comes to probability. So. From this, we're going to be able to make a bit of a list. And you might be able to do this eventually without the aid of a tree diagram, but I think it's really, really handy at the start to do this. So the list that we can make up is going to list the possible outcomes. So first off, we're going to follow along the tree, the different branches. We get a head, then a head. That's one of our first possible outcomes. Uh, we can get a head, then a tail. We can get a tail, then a head. Or we can get a tail, then a tail. All right, um, nice, eh? So we can now use this to work out some different probabilities, okay? So I'll show you how this can be used. Not only can we list out the, the different results possible, is we could actually start saying now, okay, what's the probability, say, of getting two heads? So what's the probability of getting two heads? You're gonna see, altogether, there are four possible outcomes, so that's gonna go on the bottom there, but only one of these possible outcomes contains two heads, so it's a one in four chance. Okay, what's the probability of getting a head or a tail? But I'm going to say that not in order. So it could be a head or a tail, or a tail then a head. And that's going to give you a bit of a hint straight away. Okay, so if I was to say, in a tossing, what's the chance of getting like a, a head or a tail? But not like that. You could say, okay, you could get a head or a tail here, or a tail and a head. So this is two, there's two uh, desirable outcomes out of a total of four outcomes. Now you can probably look straight away and say, okay, probability of getting tails and tails is also one out of four, yeah? But what's okay, what about the probability of at least uh, one tail, okay? Now you can look at this and say, this is equal to, now how many of these have got at least one tail? This has at least one tail, this has at least one tail, this has at least one tail. So our probability is three out of four. Okay, these are really, really simple, right? So hopefully uh, you picked it up pretty quickly. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you an example to do on this. Okay, so what I'm gonna get you to do is answer this one. A family has three children, boys or girls. What's the probability of getting three boys? What's the probability of getting two girls and a boy, but not necessarily that in order? And what's the probability of getting at least one boy? So first off, what you should do is use a tree diagram to set this up and list out your combinations and then we'll answer these questions. So give it a go. Okay, so let's have a look at this. The first thing you could do is you could say for the very first, we could end up with a boy or a girl. Okay, that's the very, very first uh, <laughs> child that's born. For the second child that's born, you can end up with a boy or a girl, or a boy or a girl. 
For the third child, he can end up with a boy or a girl, a boy or a girl, a boy or a girl, or a boy or a girl. So that's your tree diagram all set up. Let's list out the, prob the possibility. So you could get a boy, boy, boy. You could get a boy, boy, girl. You could get a boy, girl, boy. You could get a boy, girl, girl. You could get a girl, boy, boy. You could get a girl, boy, girl. You could get a girl, girl, boy. Or you get a girl, girl, girl. All right, let's work out our different possibilities, our different probabilities here. So maybe you could uh, see how you go with these if you've got up to this stage. The probability of getting three boys. Now you're going to see here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes altogether. That's a terrible, terrible eight. I'm going to redraw that. So the probability of getting three boys, there's only one particular uh, scenario where this occurs. So there's one chance out of a possible eight overall outcomes. What about the probability of getting two girls and one boy? Now, I'm just going to put a little red dot, I reckon, next to this. Two girls and one boy. So, not this one. This has two boys. We're looking for two girls. Okay, this one has two girls and one boy. This one has two girls and one boy. This one has two girls and one boy. So we have one, two, three out of eight uh, possibilities. Okay, what's the probability of getting at least one boy? So, you're going to notice all these ones here all have at least one boy, except this particular one here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven chances out of eight of getting at least one boy. Because there's only one of these where you don't get one boy, that's where you get three girls. So how'd you go with that? I'll tell you what, we'll give you one more question here. Okay, for our last example, three cards labelled three, four, and five are placed next to each other randomly after being drawn out of a hat. So you're going to use uh, a probability tree to illustrate the different results possible, and then we're going to use this to work out the probability that the number made, in the three-digit number made, is even, or that the three-digit number made is less than 500. So let's go and work out a uh, tree diagram. So the first thing you notice is that we have possibly three different cards that we can draw for the very first number. So we're going to reflect this in our tree diagram. We've got three branches coming out, that is. Okay, so the first card drawn could be a three, a four, or a five. So if you were to draw a three first, the next card would, could be a four or a five. If you were to draw a four first, the next card would be a three or a five. If you were to draw a five first, the next card could be a three or a four. So for the last card drawn, if you draw a three then a four, you're going to have to get a five. If you get a three then a five, you're going to have to get the four last. Four, three is going to give you a five. Four, five is going to give you a three. 5, 3 is going to give you a 4, and 5, 4 is going to give you a 3. So we can list out all the potential results. Now we can get a 3, 4, 5. The number could be 3, 5, 4. The number could be 4, 3, 5. The number could be 4, 5, 3. The number could be 5, 3, 4. Or the number could be 5, 4, 3. Awesome. So, let's go now and work out our uh, different probabilities. Now, the probability of getting an even here. You're going to see how many even numbers. Well, all up we have six possible outcomes for our numbers, and one, two of them are even. So, this is a two out of six probability, which could be simplified further to a one out of three probability. Now, the probability of getting a number less than 500. So, what numbers have we got less than 500 here? This is less than 500. 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 There's four numbers less than 500. So, this is a four out of six probability, which can be simplified to two out of three. Anyway, 
I uh, hope that was of some help to you. Uh, thank you to the people who have commented. Uh, two lots of people now. Because <laughs> this is the third time this video has been loaded up from mistakes. Uh, so thank you for those guys who have picked out those errors. I would hate to have a video sitting out there with mistakes and confusing people. So thank you for those really, really big time. Okay, if you like this video, please really, really crack down on that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, and there's also a little link down the bottom for a Patreon feed. Uh, pretty much, if you want these videos to become more frequent, uh, give me a bit of incentive to make more of them and that sort of deal, uh, you can support the Tech Math channel. There's also some merch that you can certainly find links for. You could be wearing Tech Math stuff around the place. You would not look dodgy at all. Uh, okay, you'd look a little bit dodgy, but that wouldn't be my stuff. That would probably be just you, okay? So anyway, thank you for watching the Tech Math channel. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.